Well, it is amazing to be back at UCL, and thank you so much, Mark, for the kind words. So five years ago, it all started here at UCL, and um, it was just a sort of an idea, a concept to try and create the world's first 3D printed bicycle helmet. So when I first started, I started making these plastic you know, honeycomb structures, because honeycombs have the highest crush strength to weight ratio. And what was so interesting about these honeycomb structures is that if you could make them curved, then you could maintain that same properties all around the same surface, that curved surface. And there's only one way of doing that, and that's by 3D printing. So I spent one year building up test rigs, doing loads of testing, was super curious about trying to sort of make this into a commercial product, and uh, landed with this 10,000 uh, pounds grant from UCL. And here I was, this is about four or five years ago, on this stage. And um, it was such an honor to be given this award. Uh, and that then uh, allowed me to go to Oxford and spend three more years working with professors and impact mechanics and computational brain mechanics to understand more about cellular structures and how we can use 3D printing to create energy absorbing structures that are better than foam material. So I'm gonna hand you over to Henry, the co-founder, who can explain a bit more about the science. Thank you, Jamie. Um, so honeycomb structures in the outer plane are known as post-yield softening structures. This is considered a flaw property in uh, energy absorbing medium. Um, however, on a, f uh, on a f curved surface, uh, the energy absorbed uh, varies with the contact area. And this is a really important consideration when you're trying to protect a curved surface. So this is two com a comparison between our, our hexo structure and a foam medium. What happens with the foam is as it densifies, the force peaks, delivering dangerous amounts of energy to the head, whereas our structure controls that much more effectively. Yeah, so after about four years of long, hard research, we thought, okay, let's try and turn this into a real commercial product. So we brought along another co-founder, Georgie Smithwick, who was from Diageo, completely different world to me. Uh, she set up brands and, and done a lot around commercials. So she came on board. We also worked with leading industrial designers and creative um, designers to create a product that is totally, I mean, beautiful, aesthetically well-designed, but could deliver on all of these different design functions like breathability and, and comfort. We've also linked up with some of the leading uh, manufacturing companies like EOS uh, to create a completely, uh, perfectly 3D printed product. So this is it. This is the 3D printed honeycomb structure. And as you can see, it has this polycarbonate shell on top of the honeycomb structure. That shell you can take off. Um, also, the chin straps are completely modular because of all this complexity you can build into 3D printing. It has the uniform honeycomb structure that can absorb twice the amount of energy than a normal foam helmet can do. And I can explain this later after the show. Um, and also, each helmet fits perfectly because we use a 3D scan. So off we go, let's do the, uh, the demo. So I have to put this scanning cap over my head. It's the only problem. <laughs> over your ears like this. And... So the process takes about 15 seconds. And we capture a 30,000 data point scan. Here's one I made earlier. And with that, it's sent off to... Here you go, Jamie. Thank you very much, it looks like me. It's sent off to our servers, <laughs> where we manually review it. We clean it, turn it into a mathematical representation of your head. The customer then receives a model and their parameters. Jamie's 58.2, 40th percentile, perfectly normal. Head weight, <laughs> five kilos, and 4,500 Skittles would fit in his head. The customer also has the ability to view their head on an in-browser 3D viewer. So it's quite fun to play around with. Simultaneously, the model sent off to our 3D printing partners and manufactured in on demand. So we've spent a long time developing the material science, and the technologies around 3D printing to create a, a revolutionary helmet product. But also, Henry's been spending a lot of time developing these automation processes so we can take a head scan and build a completely perfect 3D printed structure. And we're really excited about using this technology and material science into other types of helmet applications in the future, such as equestrian, motorcycling, and alpine sports. And, and together, that's a huge market uh, for a small company like us to start. So we launched it a few months ago, and in a few weeks, we'll be uh, shipping our first products after a great reception from consumers and press. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers.